everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about me being an only child growing up. What I do this video is I always get assumptions of the way I am and I always get questions. And personally, I don't know any of my friends who are only children or any other family members that are only children. So for me, it's something that I feel like a bit isolated on. And Hopefully there'll be a few other people that are only children as well that can relate to this video. I thought I'd tell you about the impact it's had on me to give you a bit more of an idea of why I am the way I am. So when I was really, really little, I was always playing by myself as I had no other option before I went to nursery, before I went to anywhere. Um, I think that's a common thing for most children anyway if you're the first child. Literally from a young age I learnt how to be on my own and enjoy my own company and I remember even when I did start school and everything, I remember my friends always knocking for me to come out and to be honest with you, when I was younger I had a lot of friends and I had my cousins as well so I'd spend a lot of time with them practically every single day. As soon as I got back from school I'd be out with my friends until I had my curfew. So I didn't really feel that lonely. Obviously when I was at home, like at night time I would have to go to bed. So. I remember my friends always knocking on my door, even like some days I just wanted to be on my own and I don't know whether that's an only child thing, but I still get it now where I just want to be on my own even in a relationship, I don't want to be around someone 24 seven. I feel quite blessed that I had a lot of friends growing up, however like at times like Christmas it would just be me, my mum and dad, um, and also on holidays it would just be me and my mum and dad, so I had to like play by myself or my parents always would get like Monopoly out or we'd have like travel games or cards or chess, I used to like playing chess but it was like I had to beg my parents let's play like chess or let's play Monopoly um, and obviously not all the time parents want to play but I used to have a Wendy house and I always used to beg my mum can we play tea parties and like, bless my mum she used to play with me like once a week in the Wendy house she always used to read to me and stuff but like I wanted to do things and play like mums and dads and stuff so obviously your parents can't be everything but they did their best bless them as I said as I got older I always played with my friends all the time and we always played lots and lots of things when I was really young as well I was very lucky that my parents would pay for my friends to come to gardens with me to come to Brighton anywhere in the UK basically wherever we went I always had a friend with me it was only when we went abroad on holiday that I couldn't really bring my friends and so my parents were a bit naughty and they always used to take me away off term time so I was always away when I was meant to be at school um, but I was really happy about that obviously being young and also every single Friday we used to go to Sainsbury's and I always was allowed to bring one friend with me and we always used to have fun and they always used to have testers we always used to try the chocolate out and stuff and be on the trolley so like for me it was a fun time for my parents it probably was really stressful on a Friday after work and everything to go shopping one shopping that I didn't like doing which I had to do on my own was um, clothes shopping for my mum most weekends me and my parents would go to the West End and we'd go shopping clothes shopping and so we'd go for a meal the gap was like really in fashion when I was younger and I always remember going in there and like I'd see something that I want my mum would take me there to get like essential bits like tops and trousers and I'd be like I want that hat even though it's not even like winter but I'd want it because I saw it and I liked it and I'd throw a proper tantrum. If I didn't get what I wanted, I'd cry all day and then we'd have to go back to the shop and for me to get it. Um, I was a bit of a diva in that way and obviously waiting for my mum to try loads of clothes. Oh my God, when I was little, I used to hate that. I had no one to play with, I used to just sit there. I was quite a good little child, I never like threw a tantrum about that. I used to just sit and wait. But it was just to say, can we go home now? Can we go to eat now? <laughs> I always remember that. Um, so yeah, that was a bit annoying and if I had a brother or sister, probably we'd play. But being on my own, obviously sometimes it was really good because I learned to enjoy my own company. People always ask like, do you have imaginary friends? Like when you have no siblings, but I didn't. But like my teddies, I used to like proper love my teddies. And I used to put them all along the bed and I used to say goodnight to all of them. They all had like an order. And um, I used to have cats as well, so that they were like my babies, and I used to give them pocket money every week. <laughs> I was such a loser. Um, so yeah, I was really like, I was such a sweet child, honestly, if I do say so myself. It was only until I got to teenage years that I became a bit of a diva and like 
a bit of a nightmare. I love my own time and my own space. Also growing up, like, I forget that my mum had me at 25 and like when you're younger you think 25 is really old. But like my mum would have her friends round and they'd have parties like once a month and stuff. That was the only time like I didn't have to go to bed early. So I'd sit there and I just used to sit there and listen to people's conversations. And I'd never say anything, I just used to sit there and listen. And I do believe like subconsciously I've learned so much about life just through sitting there listening to people because people always say like I've got an old soul, like I really connect with people, I always feel people's emotions really easily. I I understand so much about people and I always make an effort to understand about people because I understand people have gone through so much. My mum would obviously be with her friends and they'd be opening up about things and at that age I didn't understand it but I think it just like sinked into my head somehow, if you get what I mean. Um, so I really enjoyed listening to people's conversations, even if my mum would be on the phone and listen to her conversations. This is what you do as an only child, you have nothing else to do. So. I had more time to think about my thoughts and think about my emotions and connect with them. I didn't ever have to suppress them and my mum always made a point that you should express yourself. And I think if I had a brother or a sister, I'd probably like try and be like them. Maybe I wouldn't show my emotion as much or maybe I wouldn't connect with it as much because I wouldn't have as much time to think about it because I'd be playing or I'd be doing something, you know what I mean? So it's a good thing and a bad thing. But one thing I'm really guilty of being an only child is that I hate sharing food. <laughs> and I hate sharing like, I don't know, I like sharing things. I like sharing food if it's meant to be shared. If you say like, let's share this, I'm, I'm prepared for it then. But if I bought like a bag of chips, for instance, and then someone started helping themselves to my chips, I'd be like, um, <laughs> you know like that scene in, um, friends and Joey gets upset like I totally understand that if you wanted to buy something in a restaurant you should buy it for yourself don't eat mine <laughs> you know what I mean I don't think I'd really be happy with sharing my clothes with a sibling if I'm being totally honest maybe if I did have brothers and sisters I'd be used to it and I would have shared it but because I'm so not used to it I can't imagine that everything in my bedroom stayed the same like no one took anything or everything is the same so I've noticed as I've gotten older if someone comes in my home and moves something or they ask to have something I'm like <laughs> I get really funny about it Um, I don't like that so I don't know whether that's an only child thing also I remember because I had a lot of friends like every birthday I'd have like loads of people over my house and I'd have a bouncy castle or we'd do something one thing that was like something my parents always did. We'd have like parcel parcel and we do all like them sort of party games. Everyone always got a goodie bag. Um, I never knew what would be in the parcel parcel or in the goodie bag because obviously I was a child then. My mum wouldn't be like, oh, right, I'm putting that in there. You know what I mean? So it was always a surprise even for me. But one thing I do always remember is that like when we was doing parcel parcel, afterwards I'd be like, mum, I want that thing from the goodie bag or I want that in the parcel parcel and they'd be like really cheap things like when you're little you think it's really good and my mum the next day bless her she'd go out and buy me um, whatever it was like the goodie bag set again because I would really want it and it was my birthday so I was like if it's my birthday <laughs> I need it <laughs> I wouldn't say I was spoiled but yeah for my birthday something it was like, my mum would be like, we are spoiling you, it's your birthday. Like, I knew that was the time to be spoiled. And like, I remember at Christmas as well, oh god, that was awful. At Christmas, I remember one year, like, I got so much stuff. I was always getting loads of stuff um, for Christmas, birthdays. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, I was an only child, so I did get a lot of things. And for Easter, or my tooth filling out, or whatever, I'd always get, like, a lot of money or a lot of presents. And I remember one year, like I asked for a baby born, like anyone that was born in the 90s knows about the baby born. I, was, I asked for a baby born and my mum got me everything, everything else. But she got me this other baby and I don't know what baby it was, but it wasn't a baby born. So I, I literally, I had everything else that I asked for, but the whole of Christmas day, I was miserable as sin. I was like, I wanted my baby born and I didn't get my baby born. And obviously that day all the shops were closed. And then the next day, bless them, they got me a baby born because I just literally had a face like a slap class the whole day. And I wanted my baby born. 
So sometimes I was a bit spoiled and I did get upset if I didn't get my own way. And I sort of stayed like, yeah, actually, yeah, God, I am a bit spoiled. I was a bit spoiled. My mum used to call me a spoiled brat when she used to get annoyed with me. But like, I just used to think she just said it because she was annoyed. But now when I think about it, yeah, maybe I was a little bit spoiled on some things, not with everything. Oh God, I remember when I got back from my beta, um, when I was 21, I expected so much from my 21st birthday. Like, I think I asked for like an iPod speaker and that's all my parents got me, like an iPod speaker. But I, that is what I asked for, but I expected more stuff. So when I got back, I was like, is that all you got me? <laughs> I was so ungrateful, God. God, I'm such a cow. My mum always used to say to me, Grace, you need to earn a lot of money when you're older because you want so many things. The, the only thing my mum didn't ever get me, and I remember it, was a Paddington Bear. We always used to go to Paddington Station. We used to go to Torquay, Rye, and places like that, and we used to always go to Paddington Station to get to there. There was always this shop that had a Paddington Bear in it, and I always used to ask for it. Like, I, every single time I went to this station, I said, Mum, can I have a Paddington Bear? She'd always say no. And I don't know why she said no, because obviously they had money to buy it. But I think they just said no because they didn't want me thinking I could have everything I wanted. It's the only thing my mum ever refused me of. I think I was like 18, and they were like, Grace, we've seen a Paddington Bear, and it's in Hamleys, and it's a really good one. Um, do you want it? Because you kept saying that you you didn't have it. And I was like, no, I don't want it now, but when I was a little, I wanted it. Like. I really wanted things and like I think it's sort of a drive in me now that I don't stop until I get what I want like I when I was little my mum would always say no first of all but then I'd go on and on and on about it like I remember my Burberry coat when I was like 13 years old my mum said no and um, everyone had one and I wanted a pink one and then my mum was like no 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 six months later she did buy me it but it was almost like I had to work for it yeah, I worked for everything in yeah in a talking way, not in a working way. Um, and I, I was a good girl. Like I always did everything like my mum said, and I was very polite when I was younger. Like I had quite a strict upbringing, considering all of this. When I left the table, I'd always have to say, "May I be excused?" I was. People don't really realise that about me, but I did have a strict upbringing, despite um, being a little bit spoiled. Like my parents were very strict with me and I had to be in bed by a certain time no matter if it was sunny outside no matter if all of my friends were playing outside and I could hear them I had to be in bed one thing as well like emotionally um, I remember I don't know if this is an only child thing but I used to be so conscious of upsetting people like I used to get really upset if someone would try and upset me basically now I look back they were just being horrible they say something to me and I used to think what have I done to upset them and I think it's always me but now I've grown up I just realised people are bastards and that's why they say things I used to go to bed thinking about what I've done to upset that person um, and I'd really, really think about it. And I think if I had a bit of guidance from a brother or sister, they'd like tell me straight what it is. When I got older, I opened up more to my friends and stuff, and they'd tell me how it is, and everything made sense. But you know, when you're little, like there's only so much you talk to your parents about. By the way, like someone is staring at me opposite the window, and I'm really trying not to um, acknowledge them, which is a bit awkward. Um, while I'm doing this video, <laughs> I never would tell my parents about things that I was upset about at school or anything. It was only until I was older that I did. So I feel like if I had a brother or sister, I'd be able to talk about that and understand life a bit more. I remember growing up as well, my friends always used to ask me, Grace, don't you want a brother or sister? And I'm like, yeah, of course I do. And I really did want one when I was little. Like, I really wanted a brother or sister. And they were like, just ask your mum and dad if you can have one. That's what I did. Oh, it was so cute. And then I said to my mum, Mum, can I have a brother or sister? <laughs> And she was like, yeah, maybe one day, Grace. Um, then we have to see. It doesn't just happen like that. It doesn't, it's not as easy as that. Um, but bless my parents, my mum did have a few miscarriages. It, it wasn't um, like they didn't want to have another child. And so, yeah, now I'm older, I understand like having a few miscarriages, but it obviously, wasn't meant to be. Obviously now, for people that are new to my channel who don't know, and I keep going on about this, I actually lost my mum um, a year and a half ago, and 
I technically don't really have any parents now. So it would have been really nice to have a brother or a sister to support me. Like, there's nothing like immediate family, and that's one thing I realised straight after my mum passed away. And it's sort of a reason why, when I'm older, I would love to have. I'm older. I am old. <laughs> Um, so now it's like really imperative for me to have a lot of kids because I can't wait to have lots of kids and like have our own family. But one thing that's bad on my side is that I won't be able to provide any aunts and uncles. <laughs> but hopefully the girl will have a few brothers and sisters or something to make up for that. I'm really close to my cousins and I always say that to them, like you'll be like my children's aunts and uncles. So questions I always get asked being an only child is, I bet you were spoiled. Um, as I said, I wasn't that spoiled, like, I wasn't mad spoiled, but to be honest with you, if my parents were millionaires, my mum would always say to me, like, if we had more money, we would give you more, like, we'd give you everything, which is really sweet, so I know if they, if they were millionaires, they probably would um, buy me, they did buy me whatever I wanted, but obviously if I was a millionaire child, like, I'd want more. I'd, see, I'd be more open to things of what I want, you know what I mean? Always wanted things um, and I didn't stop till I get them and that's how I am now but I work for it now. So it hasn't affected me, I don't think, in a negative way. It's been a positive thing because I've been taught, my mum always used to say you can have anything you want in this world, like, but she never really explained exactly what that meant. But now I realise if you work for it you can get anything. I haven't become like a diva or expect things from people for free. I work for everything I have. Um, another thing people always say, like, I bet you get lots of attention. I got a lot of attention as a child, and in fact, I hate attention now um, because of it. So it's a good thing and a bad thing. Like, having a lot of attention is a bit overwhelming sometimes, and I don't like it. Maybe when I was a proper little baby, I may have liked it. But as I was growing up as a teenager, I hated attention. I hate attention now. The only attention I like is if I like a guy and he gives me attention. That is literally the only attention I like. I would knock on the door when me and my friends were in my room. They're like, do you want anything? Are you okay, Grace? And I'm like, leave me alone. I'd be terrible. <laughs> and then my mom like, well, how was your day today? And I didn't want to talk about anything. Like, this is when I was a teenager. I was a bit like that. Um, but so I think it had the opposite effect for me, like I'm not an attention seeker by any means. I'd rather be in the background and in fact I hate birthdays because I don't like attention on me. Like I can't wait for every birthday to be over because I hate being the centre of attention. Another thing people always say to me, like you're an only child but you're not weird. Like, it makes me laugh because I just think I'm most only children weird because yeah, I'm not weird, <laughs> luckily. But I think it's because I've been socialised really well and I was always around my cousins or my friends. I've had really sociable jobs um, and I've worked since I was 15. So I know about being a team player and I know how to be around people of all different walks of life. Like, I love interesting people and I love getting to know people. Um, so yeah, so maybe that's why I'm not weird. I don't isolate myself. Only on occasion I do because I like my own company, but that's like once a week. It doesn't have to be all the time. And people always ask me, did I want brothers and sisters? As I said, yes I did when I was little. Now I'm older, I'm not bothered about it. I'm happy with my situation right now. I think I'd probably argue with them a lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I probably would because I'd want I'd want them to be better or I'd want them to be doing well and sometimes if I had a younger brother or sister that is and I think people don't really take kindly to that do they? If I had an older brother or sister I'd love to learn from them. So I love learning from older people so it goes both ways really, um, but yeah, if I had a brother or sister I'd be happy and if I don't I'm still content with myself because I'm so used to it, I don't know any difference. So. Do I get bored? That's another question. Did I ever get bored? No I didn't as I explained, like I was always around my friends a bit too much in fact. I liked being on my own so I never got bored and my mum always used to say only boring people get bored and I never get bored even now like I live on my own I work in my own room in my office as well if I'm at home on my own I always watch comedy like I always watch happy things and I'll just be chilling in my bath or cooking or watching telly um, that is what I do and I love doing that, I love my own time or doing my YouTube as that is what I do as well in my spare time. I never get bored of my own company. By the way, the lady opposite now, she's like doing her makeup in the window. Like, surely you don't do it in the mirror unless she's looking at me and thinking she's doing her makeup. <laughs> it's a bit strange. I do feel like I missed out on some things being an only child. I really value family and the more family the better for me. 
I missed out on learning on how to be around a sibling, obviously, because I didn't have any siblings, and that's an aspect of my brain that probably didn't develop. <laughs> but when I have my own kids, I can't wait to see their relationships form as brothers and sisters. I do not just want to have one child. If I do end up having one child, then that's fair enough, but I would ideally like to have four. I always say I want to have four. Um, so I want them to all be like, I don't want to have a middle child. Like, I've heard of the middle child syndrome, and I've also heard of the only child syndrome, but I want to have four because it's like an even number, or two. Four or two, um, so whoever I end up with will need to want to have a lot of kids. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just want to have like a big family, and I want people in and out of my home. Like I'm making the most of being on my own now because I know when I'm older I won't be on my own at all, um, and that's another reason I love having my own space because I know I will never get this time again. Make the most of being single and being on your own because when you're older you probably won't be on your own. And it's so good having your own time. I've never had to go traveling to discover myself. I don't really understand that. I know myself really well. I know all the good and bad about myself. Probably most people watching this have brothers and sisters, and if you do, it'd be interesting to know your best and worst things about having a brother or sister. Anyone watching this that's an only child, um, please let me know if you can relate to anything that I've said. I hope I've been clear on what I've said because I've just not thought about what I'm going to say and I've just said it. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.